So we know that video marketing is powerful. We know mm -hmm. that people should be doing video marketing. We know that video marketing is, is an amazing way of creating rapport, of establishing yourself as a leader, of building a brand. I mean, we know all of these things. When I look around though, I don't see enough of our affiliates using video marketing. And I know part of that, I mean, I get it. Part of it is, you know, there's, there's kind of a fear thing, you know, I mean, being on camera and putting yourself out there, it's, uh, you know, if, if you've never done it before, uh, or even if you have even perhaps done it a few times, you know, it, it's kind of challenging and it's kind of intimidating. And, and so there, there, there's definitely that hurdle. Uh, and so I, I want to definitely talk about that. I want to talk about when you, I, I, and this was actually not too long ago, you shared one of your first videos that you'd ever made, which I thought was really cool. Uh, so I want to, I want to talk about the process. I want to talk about growing and, and developing as video marketer. But before we get there, um, I think it's just important to point out, uh, that was it, I want to hear a little bit of backstory. So yeah. was it, was it at no excuses? Was it at three or four? Cause you guys have an amazing story of going yeah. from being in the seats to being on the stage and getting just kind of really frustrated and then just taking like a crazy amount of action yeah. and really making things work. So tell us a little bit about that to get started. Yeah, sure. So um, it's actually interesting because my story starts out at no excuses three. Um, I, I was a previous second grade teacher. We were at a crossroads pretty much um, just in life in general. Andrew was going to be moving across the country. I was obviously going with him to be able to, um, he was getting basically a bump up at his job and he was going to be starting out a new opportunity of opening up some new branches in the company. And I had to make a choice on, did I want to continue to keep teaching? And, and what I learned um, before I even got into business was that I was going to burn out fast if I continued to stay a teacher. And I had in my mind that, you know, I, I got a college degree, I got a master's, and that means that I should work in the same school for 30 years and do something that I love because I love kids, but I wasn't loving educating in that area anymore. And so what Andrew had been doing on the side that I really had no idea about, I was kind of this disapproving spouse, spouse or maybe you would say uneducated spouse <laughs> when it came to entrepreneurship. And he was looking at a way to build multiple streams of income, like I know a bunch of you guys who are watching this are looking to do too, um, while he was still working full time. And so basically said to me, hey, do you want to come to this event? It's going to be in Vegas and it's called No Excuses and immediately just telling you where my mindset was and like, no excuses. What does this have to be about? You know, I, I don't understand anything, but you know what? I'm open. He wants to go. That's cool. I went and it immediately changed my state of what was possible. Um, I've never met so many positive people who thought like I did. I thought I was weird when I was teaching. I, I thought I didn't really fit in. I thought I was too hungry for my job and for my profession. And then it was all of a sudden a quick shift that I went, holy cow, all this whole room is just like me looking to do things just like me and it just felt right and then needless to say i struggled for 12 months after that and uh and that's when no excuses four came around and both andrew and i got incredibly incredibly angry so i've found that there's different there's different feelings that you go through and anger is like that <laughs> that first thing that grabs you um i know it does for me that just I was upset with the fact that I was letting myself be complacent. I was letting myself be mediocre. I was giving into my excuses as to reasons as to, you know, for not shooting a video, for not doing a blog post, for not putting up an ad. I was so in my head and afraid to put myself out there that we were sitting in the front row at no excuses for. It had been 12 months and we were starting to build relationships and basically were having to make excuses at no excuses telling people, you know, well, I haven't had results yet because of X, Y, Z. And that's just not how Andrew and I function. So we got up and we left the event, locked ourselves in our hotel room, uh, skipped the VIP dinner and mapped out a 90 day action plan on what we were going to be doing. And it was going to be with video marketing. So we planned everything from the back, like, okay, I want to generate this many leads. We're getting a little bit of results with YouTube video marketing right now. So how many videos do we have to shoot in order to get to 50 leads a day by August? Um, and then what we ended up doing is we made a commitment that we were going to shoot 30 videos. I was going to shoot like three a day each week. And it got to the point where we went, you know what? Screw it. Memorial day weekend is happening in the States. Why don't we do it in that three day weekend? So we shot 30 videos in a three day weekend, created a massive amount of momentum. And here we are now. 
<laughs> that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. And and I love too how um, you know anger is 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 not the worst. I mean, it, it's not necessarily a positive emotion, but it's not the worst motivator. You know, and if you can kind of get to the place where you're really uncomfortable with where you are, that can motivate you to make some drastic, drastic changes. So right. that's cool. And I like how you guys actually, this is something that, that a lot of people do not do. And it's something that we, you know, we encourage, especially for folks that are like going through our ignition coaching program. It's mm -hmm. really about quantifying. So you guys said, well, how many videos do we need to make? You know, what is this going to look like? What's the funnel going to look like? How many videos are, you know, or do we need to make in order to generate the kind of lead flow we're looking for, presumably to create the kind of income you guys were looking to create. So that's really cool when you when you can really quantify it and put numbers around it then like magical things start happening because you have like actual real tangible goals that you can right. implement right. <laughs> incredibly clear yeah and you have and you know how close you are and you know how far away you are as well rather than something that's kind of you know light and fluffy up in the air that sounds really great <laughs> mm -hmm. but you have, really have no way of measuring it and that's one thing that i learned and i just learned from working with tim and fernie and matt um, was understanding my numbers and knowing my numbers. And that's what makes a huge difference. That's what makes things incredibly clear. And I realized that I'm actually an incredibly analytical person, which I never realized beforehand in my you know past life experiences, but that's what made it a business to me instead of just a hobby. Mm, that's awesome, that's awesome. So uh, I'm wondering if out of your, um, your experience as a teacher, there, there's a question that you might be uniquely qualified to answer and that is um, magnets. How do they work? <laughs> oh, geez. Well, let's see. I taught second grade. <laughs> so addition, subtraction, um, you know, positive negatives with magnets. Nope, no deal, no dice. My bad, okay. sorry okay. about that. <laughs> got it, got it, all right. So I'll, um, I, I'm still on the quest. If anyone knows, please fill me in because they, they're just mystified. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> by magnets. We use them a lot. However, uh, no, never dug deep into what makes a magnet a magnet. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about video marketing. Uh, sure. You are known as a video marketer, mm -hmm. and you have. Um, I actually love when I'm on Facebook and I see you know your videos come through the feed, and there's some really cool uh, tricks I think you can share with folks to help them get better results. Uh, the first thing I want to ask is. Kind of from a uh, from a from a broad perspective, um, are you utilizing both YouTube and Facebook? And kind of how how what does your kind of presence look like right now with with you know creation of videos and, and syndication of videos and where are you hosting your videos? What what tools are you using? Yeah, sure, great question. So I'm actually I am using both. Um, a lot of what we've done with YouTube is passive, which is kind of cool. That's the cool thing about YouTube is it's a search based strategy which is one reason as to why I love YouTube is because people have to actively search for your videos for them to pop up for them to look at them and be able to see them. Um, Facebook is more of an interruption marketing approach where like you said it pops up in your newsfeed because I'm I'm targeting you I'm looking for somebody who you know likes network marketing or someone who wants to build a home business someone who likes you know Tony Robbins those are the people that I'm targeting and if you like them on Facebook then I'm gonna pop up in your newsfeed but YouTube is a very different approach people are searching for that kind of content they're searching for the solution to their problem so so they're almost two different beasts in a real positive way um, and what I like about both is number one, YouTube, I think of as residual. I think of it as a long-term strategy. Um, and I think of it as, so we set up videos two years ago that are still generating us between 15 to 20 leads per day, just because we did the process correctly, right? And the cool thing is, is inside of the EMP in the back office, there's this awesome PDF that walks you through step-by-step -step the whole strategy. Um, but Facebook video ads is different. And the reason why I like Facebook video ads is because it's fast and you get results fast. So you can upload a video there quickly and it's a whole different approach. And we can talk about that a little bit too, if you want, um, whole different approach, but what it does is it gets you fast, instant results. And my apologies guys, it sounds like there's like a helicopter hanging over my house. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it's not, it's not, it, it's not too bad. So. Okay. Good. Yeah. Luckily, it's not you know the, the the mic isn't picking up on it like too ridiculously. So. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Yeti, work for me here. Um, <laughs> and then when it comes to where I host my videos, so I've got a blog, and I host all of those videos. So I so let me go back. When I first started, I hosted everything on YouTube. 
because I felt like that was the best approach. Host it on YouTube. I might post it on my Facebook fan page, and then I would host it on my blog through YouTube. Um, due to the fact of just, I don't like when I can't have control over certain things. And with YouTube and with hosting videos on YouTube, yes, it gets you a little extra bump in the amount of views you get if you, you know, put them on your blog. But what I've learned is that you don't, YouTube controls YouTube. Facebook controls Facebook. And so when I have videos that I want to put on my blog, I actually host them through Wistia right now. And that's what I have found to be the best benefit and the safest way because if I'm hammering out a ton of content, yeah, maybe in the short term that YouTube video will help me get some extra rankings or it might give me some extra juice to my video, but I want to protect my content long term. So instead, host my videos on my blog through Wistia. I still upload those videos onto YouTube and then I actually create little teaser videos that I put on Facebook. So I don't know, Andrew, if you want me to talk about the reason I don't post a whole video on Facebook, we can talk about that or whatever you I, think. Yeah, I think um, I think we'll get there. I think before yeah. we do, um, I'm curious because I believe um, Wistia has some cool like analytics stuff that kind of go, don't you get some really cool data out of Wistia? Well, I'm, I'm curious to hear a little bit more about that as well. Well, I love it because what I can tell is I can tell you know, how many views I've gotten, when people drop off, how long people stay. There's actually, um, it, it's a lot like YouTube now and how YouTube used to be where you can have clickable annotations at the end where you can send people over to different offers. So they've almost basically replaced YouTube in a way with regards to a hosting device. And that's what I like. Um, I like what, what are some of the other things you do? There's just so much more customizing. So I use Wistia for everything. I use it for our sales videos because I can take off my play buttons. I can't, I can take away that access so somebody can't just forward through my sales video. Um, let me think of some of the other things I'm trying to think of um, like analytics wise. More often than not for me, just as a video marketer, I want to know where they're falling off. Because for me, that's going to tell me, did they even get to my call to action? Did they get the value that I wanted them to get? Are they going to be able to take the actions that I need them to take? So for me as a video marketer, that's the most important part that I find highly, highly valuable mm -hmm. when it comes to that stuff. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's huge. And, and I've heard uh, from, from video marketers that um, just like you were saying, watching where folks are dropping off and then really tailoring the length of your content to, uh, you know, to, to the, the modern attention span and just how important that really is. Yeah, because <laughs> it's like squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think they said, like the average attention span is like it is like seven seconds. It's mm -hmm. ridiculous on how fast people's attention spans move from one thing to another if they're not hyper focused and interested, which is crazy. It, it, it is crazy. And what's funny is, uh, and some of you have probably had this experience where you'll watch a viral video and you can tell if a viral video was designed for that, you know, it's, it's, I think it is like seven seconds, something like that. If it was designed for uh, that block of time, because it'll, you'll, you'll, every single clip, you know, there'll be a bunch of clips and they'll all be exactly that length. And it, you just, you're so engaged. You're like, I can't look away, you know, but if it's, <laughs> exactly. but if there's, a, there's a stretch that's like, two, if you're watching a, you know, a, a different video that, you know, they're not as savvy and it's, uh, there's a stretch of, of, of film that's, you know, it's, there's no edits or transitions or anything and it goes on too long, you know, it's like 15 seconds or something. It's like, ah, oh, what's, you start like looking out the window, you know, you're like, okay, <laughs> it's not keeping your attention. So exactly. yeah, we really are, you know, that's, that's kind of where everyone's, um, <laughs> we've been trained with, uh, with, you know, uh, the media these days. Um, Totally. And all the ways we can consume media to uh, yeah. have just the net like attention span. So I do want to talk about your um, your teaser video strategy on Facebook. Before we get there, though, I'd love to discuss a little bit about um, the importance of creating uh, or, or perhaps and, and I know that you uh, you shared some thoughts on this not too long ago, but the importance of creating a page versus using your personal profile, uh, mm -hmm. running like campaigns to really go after a particular a responsive demographic, you know, I, I'd kind of like to put a little little meat on on those ideas first. Yeah, sure, definitely. So a couple of things that I've learned, and I've actually done both strategies. So there's a, there's a strategy where you can market your business 
through Facebook, right? On your personal profile, the one that you have set up for your friends and family. And then there's the other option where you can build your business through a business fan page. Um, I have done both. And that's, that's I, I wanna be upfront and share that with you because it's important to know that I've done both. So it's not like, well, I just hopped over to creating a fan page, never ever played around with this one or tested it out. One thing that I've learned that I think has really helped us with regards to having success in our business and having it quickly is looking at taking action, how it gets us results, and then how we can scale it quickly. So what I started to pay attention to, which I didn't in the beginning, because um, I just don't think my business mindset was as savvy as, as it could have been, was that I was spending a lot of time. And so when I was doing this Facebook marketing strategy where I was networking and I was building up a group of, um, of people who are interested in my stuff on my personal page, what I started to find is that that took me a lot of time. And when, when we talked about numbers earlier, when I went back and I looked at, okay, how many, how many times did I have to converse with that person? How many times did I have to like post motivational stuff in order to actually get some sort of sign up into my business? The average was between 14 to 30 days to get that one person to say yes and to do something. And so for me, what I learned was that that's a lot of time and energy. And if I do my numbers, if I get one person every 14 to 30 days, how many people do I have to talk to and do I have to reach out to? So that can't be duplicatable, right? I can't hire out an assistant. I can't hire out a you know video editor to take to take some of that off of my back. This is something that I have all that this is something that I have to do. So the problem that I found is that I couldn't leverage it, right? The other problem is that I, we talked about insights and analytics. I couldn't figure out what's working and what's not working. So I could put up a great motivational post, but I couldn't figure out um, if anybody really, um, let's see. <laughs> this is just, this is the power of working from home. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And this is the adaptability that I guess we just need to have, huh? Uh, UPS trucks and my dog Marley just they don't mix. That, no, those are those two things that do not go very well together. <laughs> those are two things that do not go well, very, very well together. This will actually be really great when we start talking about actually dynamics of video. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be good. But so what I found basically with a Facebook profile is number one, I couldn't measure results. It took me too long to get results. And third thing, I couldn't advertise to those people. So I couldn't collect all those people who were who I was starting to build a relationship with and then place an ad and target them. That's what I have found is so powerful about building a fan base. Number one, Facebook created business pages for a reason, for you to do business on your page. Um, yes, it can be scaled to as, as big as you want your fan base to be. And then what I also learned that I love is that you can start to target your fans, right? So we were talking about um, like I was, I was actually thinking, Andrew, when you were talking about people who are video marketers and you see, you know, like every seven seconds they do something and then you see other people who post videos that are about eight minutes long. However, they have such a strong following that it doesn't matter. So they can put a video on Facebook that's eight minutes long and people will watch because they love that person. That's the sign of someone who's built up a great brand on their Facebook fan page, right? But then what's cool is that you can do so many different things to retarget those people, to advertise to those people, to market to those people and actually make money, generate leads without having to do all that physical stuff yourself. So what I learned was that building a likes campaign, which is one of the ads that you can do that I know these guys have amazing training for you guys in, the, in your back office about, but creating that likes campaign is when you get to laser target in on who you think is the ideal person to invest in your products and services and actually create an ad around that. So you build up, we've got, I've got 62,000 fans right now. So I have 62,000 people who are ideal prospects and customers that I can target my ads to. Okay. I can outside target. I can find other people on Facebook as well, but I've got six, I've got a group of 62,000 people right there that I can target that already know me and liked my page because they chose to not because I'm popping up in their newsfeed, right? Like sometimes those videos do. On my personal page, half of those people, my grandma, got my aunt, got my brother, you know? And when I think about long-term business and I think about being able to leverage and scale, yeah, it works for the short term. And we did that, we did do that. I did it while we were building up YouTube marketing. 
But when I made the transition to Facebook, that's when my business became my business when I shifted to my business page and I took it seriously. Yeah, no, and it's, it's, it's so powerful to have, um, like you were saying, the, the people that chose to follow you and being able to market directly to them is just so, so incredibly powerful. Um, right. And so that's awesome. Yeah, I really wanted to um, you know, make sure folks, uh, we, we get that question a lot like, oh, can I do this for my personal page? And it's like, well, you, you can, um, but there are definitely advantages to, uh, right. to building up that audience. Well, and so. you think about Macy's, you think about Walmart, you think about you know all these companies, you think about these brands, you think about celebrities. Um, I apologize, this is just gonna be, this is gonna be the way it's gonna be right now. <laughs> that's just how it is. It's just, it's what's happening. It yeah. It's UPS time, so this is, how it's gonna be um, but I think about all those companies I think about celebrities how are they marketing themselves they're marketing themselves on a business fan page right you don't see Macy's on a personal profile talking about discounted you know dress sales that are coming up for the next three days and you better buy that's not how it works so what I would encourage anybody who's watching is to really step back and truly think about is this a business and is this a business for you that you want to have for the long term if it is then a business fan page is exactly what you should be doing Mm. Excellent. So you've got you've got the page. Yep. You're you're building the likes. Yep. Now you're you're implementing the teaser video strategy. Let's talk about that. Okay. So one thing that I've I fell in love with was and I started to see some people do it. And when I what I start what I've learned is becoming incredibly aware of what other marketers who are promoting similar things to you are doing because a lot of times you can catch trends before the masses do. And I was seeing people like Frank Kern and Perry Marshall starting to put up these little 30 second videos that were almost like commercials, right? That were promoting a book, promoting a blog post, promoting a webinar that they were doing. And so immediately in my mind, I'm going, hmm, how can I utilize this in order to get ahead of the curve, but also in order to get people to where I want them to go? Right. So video teaser ads are pretty cool. And when we talked about YouTube earlier, right, people are looking for content. They're looking for solutions to their problems. So those videos are about three to five minutes long, even longer if you want them to. And they should be because you're trying to provide that content and that value on the spot and then giving them somewhere else where you can hopefully monetize, have them buy a product or something like that or or become a lead for you. Facebook is very different. So when what I've learned, and this will just be for you guys, is that most people stay on a video for 15 to 20 seconds on Facebook, no matter how long it is, no matter how short it is, it's still 15 to 20 seconds because that's kind of how people's attention spans are, right? So what I learned is that these little video teaser ads, you can create them like a commercial where it's basically promoting what you want them to go and check out whether it's to register for a webinar. I do it a lot to send people over to blog posts now because, and I know you guys have amazing training on, on retargeting and, and pixels and all that kind of stuff, but I send them over to my blog to create this new list of people who go and visit my blog so that I can create ads for those people through Facebook. But I do it all through video, and the reason I love this is because when I scroll through my news feed, right, right now what I'm seeing is I'm seeing a ton of videos. So what that tells me is that people are inclined to wanting to see video. So if I can do a little bit of marketing in there and I can do something that's going to send people over to a place of value and I can do it through video because their brains are already inclined to want to watch it, then let's do it, right? Because all the other marketers out there are doing these image ads that are all very, very similar, right? So, so as a marketer, how can I stand out from the crowd? How can I look different? How can I still give them value? And how can I connect with them? I don't think there's a better way to connect with somebody online than by utilizing video. And so by doing these quick little 30 second, pretty much commercials, that's promoting what you're doing, giving them a little taste, creating curiosity, and then sending them over, because that's really where I want them to go anyways. I want them to go take action on my blog or register for, my webinar that's coming up or you know go get my ebook then let's do it so that's kind of the importance of the video teaser ad is that attention spans on Facebook super short so it's creating videos that are teeny tiny that then lead them over to more content and value I love it and one thing that you do really well is both in the text of the ad 
both mm -hmm. in, of course, the teaser video itself, and then both in putting uh, text onto the teaser video, uh, you create a lot of curiosity. You're opening up a lot of loops. You know, you're 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 creating that pull to draw them into, you know, whether it's a webinar registration page, whether it's a blog post, you know, whatever it happens to be. So tell us just a little bit about the psychology of that. Because, you know, when you say commercial, uh, it, it helps to uh, kind of put a little bit of meat on that so folks know uh, the kind of commercial we're talking about here is one that creates a lot of desire and curiosity to, to check out what you've got going on. Yeah, great. Um, I'll give you one example of one that's worked really well for us. But I'll also share that a lot of the things that I've done inside of these videos is due to testing. So when we were talking about like analytics inside of Wistia, Facebook has great insights. Another reason why you want to use your business fan page because I can tell when somebody drops off of my video. So when I started doing this in the beginning, I just put up a little video. It was about 30 seconds long. They actually were more like a minute to two minutes long. Um, and what I started to pay attention to is when people are dropping off, I got very educated in, in video in general on Facebook. And what I learned is that in order um, for a view to count as a view on Facebook, it takes three seconds in order for that to trigger. And most people are watching the video on mute until about five seconds in or until about seven seconds in. So what I started to think about is, and. What I started to think about is, okay, so all these people are scrolling through their newsfeed, right? And they're just watching all these muted videos. What can I do in order to get them curious to want to unmute my video? So what I started doing is I put up these little like pop-up texts, which we call annotations. I put up these pop-up texts. And as an example, one of my blog posts actually sent people to attraction marketing formula that you have in your back office. And I was talking about four different kinds of people that you can recruit into your business. And three of them will sabotage your business. And one of them is the style and characteristic of the kind of person that you want to recruit into your business um, in order to create that long-term happy, healthy business that you want of people who will duplicate, right? That was the whole premises of my blog post, premises of my video. So my, my initial pop-up was, are you secretively sabotaging your business? Question mark. And I put that in and I let it stay there for about seven seconds because I knew that for seven seconds, people are gonna see me talking, but they're really not gonna be paying attention. And so having that curiosity right there, and especially if I'm targeting the right people, right? I'm not targeting grandma and I'm not targeting, you know, my brother who has no interest in my business. I'm targeting people who are interested in building a business and learning more about you know, having a successful business online. That's gonna strike them and it's gonna make them go, I don't know, am I sabotaging myself? I have no idea. They're gonna click the play button, right? So that's the first thing that I did is I started paying attention to where people were falling off, see if there was a way to extend it. The next thing with this style of video is telling people what to do immediately afterwards. Okay, so you've got this bubble and then in most videos, you give content and value and then you tell people what to do at the end. You tell them to go over and click on a link or go check out my blog, not on Facebook. You wanna give them a call to action at like seven seconds, right? So right after they unmute you, you wanna tell them what to do next actually because you will have some people who are like my husband who are like, I need it, I need it now. I don't have time to watch 30 seconds. I gotta go over to the blog and I want to cater to those people, right? You guys are missing out if you're not doing a call to action, which is simply just telling people what to do next, okay? So I would have that bubble up, and then I would say, and when you click the link that's in this post, or you click on the button that's above my head inside of this video, what you're gonna be able to do is go over to a blog post that's gonna share with you those four personalities and the number one kind of person that you wanna recruit into your business. So those two have been incredibly powerful since we really um, started putting those into our videos. The next thing I would say that we were that we would do is continue to have pop-ups, okay? Like almost every 10 to like seven to 10 seconds, we would have another pop-up that would create curiosity or, um, or, or some sort of reason as to why they needed to head over to the blog. And I would give a little bit of value at that time too, right? So I'm almost, sandwiching in, if this makes sense to you guys, I'm sandwiching in, I'm giving them value, I'm talking about value, I'm talking about what they're gonna get in a blog post, but I'm also putting pop-ups that are almost triggering even more curiosity in their mind. 
or telling them, I'll let you know right now, you know, you will continue to self sabotage your business if you recruit the first three that I'm going to talk about inside of this blog post here. In fact, I bet you're already recruiting those kind of people into your business while I'm talking about all this value that they're going to get. Right? So my whole intention with this video is to get them over to my blog post. The last thing I do is give them one more call to action and be very direct and very clear on what they're going to get. So if I have a link that's in my description up top in my ad, I'm going to point up there or I'm going to be silly and I'm going to point sideways or below kind of keep them interactive with me. Or if I've got a button, I'm going to tell them exactly what that button says. You know, go click the learn more button and you can find out how to head over to my blog, register for my webinar. And I'm being incredibly descriptive. And then the last thing that I started adding in that this is a new twist is a little bit of engagement. And so what I'll tell them to do is, you know, tag their friends, share this with somebody else who you think might need it or comment below. This works really well for webinars. Comment below with a yes if you have committed to coming, that you're going to go over and you're going to register for the webinar and you're going to come because Facebook loves um, interaction right now. And so that's the most important part. Those are the things that I've kind of perfected and tweaked in order to make these kind of commercials very interactive, very curious, but then also making people take action. I love it. I love it. So much good stuff there. I mean, getting people engaged is huge. And then really there's, um, there's a place obviously for a, a benefit. Benefits are, you know, they're beneficial, they're valuable. People want yeah. the benefit, but there's something magical that happens because the benefit by itself, while, you know, awesome, it, it kind of leaves you a little wanting because there's benefit everywhere, right? Everyone's sort of marketing with benefits, but curiosity, you know, curiosity, again, curiosity by itself, right? Like what does a magnet do? I have no idea. I'm curious. Don't get me wrong, but there's not a, a, a strong benefit for that. But when you take the benefit and the curiosity and put them together, you have this magical combination that just is is so, so powerful. So Definitely. very, very cool. This strategy, of course, uh, between um, you know building your audience, using the teaser videos, uh, you and uh, your husband, Andrew, have done very, very well. Uh, I know you guys have done um, at least uh, I know you guys have launched your own product, uh, po possibly products. And I know you you guys have done six figure launches. Uh, I know that you're top producers in two programs here at Elite Marketing Pro. You are one of our heavy hitters making between 30 and, and 50K between 2014 and 2015. Really important to note that um, Elite Marketing Pro is, is only, of course, one of your income streams. Yeah. And so everything we're discussing is uh, it's just so powerful uh, and has worked, uh, you know, so, so awesomely uh, for you guys. So very, very cool. Definitely want to give you guys uh, some recognition there. And I want to do, uh, before we sign off, I want to do a quick, like, uh, quick blitz of, of, of video sort of best practices. What do you think of the, uh, the, 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 the driving video? You see this all the time. You do the driving video where you're like driving the vehicle and you got the camera on and it seems a little dangerous to me. What are your thoughts on that? So I never do the driving video. I, um, spoiler alert, pull over to the side of the road and I record it that way. Um, I just find that I need to have my attention on my message. Um, and I just, I don't think I need to drive to do that. I can record a quick two minute video and pull over to the side of the road, but I definitely do selfie videos like that because, um, that's who I'm targeting. I'm targeting somebody who wants to build a business from home and I want to show them how easy it can be to do that. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. So when inspiration strikes, you're ready, right? I mean, that's what's kind of cool about the uh, the exactly. phone. They're, they're always there. Um, okay, now, selfie stick, yes or no? I don't have one. And so I've just, I just, I haven't gotten one yet. I would love to, but I just kind of got used to, like you said, if I'm not going to carry my selfie stick around in my purse, my purse is this big, <laughs> and I only use this purse. I'm not a purse lady. So I can't pull it out of my pocket, so why don't I just do exactly what I would expect somebody else to do and just shoot it up and then I'm good to go. But I do think that they're pretty darn amazing, uh, especially if you're doing interview videos and that's all you've got and you've got to interview somebody uh, with your camera on your phone, use a selfie stick. They're cool. Nice. I, I have to say, I don't have one either, but um, you know, it, it seems like one of those things I know people with selfie sticks are like getting a little bit of flack right now, but it's just like, you know, that looks really handy. That really looks like quite effective for- I uh, bet they get much better selfie pictures than I do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> So I'm sure there's a huge benefit to it. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So, um, okay, um, cardigans, yes or no? Mm, yes, especially if they're Argyle. <laughs> right, 
<laughs> right? Come on. The Argyle sweater vest? I mean, can you go wrong? <laughs> Seriously, yeah, and sweater vest, not a cardigan, sweater vest. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's quality. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, uh, let's see, let's see, do I have a final uh, question for you? Star Trek or Star Wars? Star Wars. That is Never cool. a big Star Trek fan, so I would have to say Star Wars. I was brought up in a Star Wars house. <laughs> that is the correct answer. Yes. Um, okay, good. Yay, I win. <laughs> so um, I want for everyone who was uh, intrigued, possibly a bit curious, possibly saw some benefit in what we were discussing today, definitely check out Kate and Andrew did a series in What's Working Now a few months back. You can go into your What's Working Now training library and check it out. They talk all about uh, what they're doing for traffic generation, uh, creating video funnels, uh, follow-up. I mean, it, it's literally, it's all there. Um, so it was an awesome three-part series. Definitely check that out. Also, Kate, you've been featured uh, quite a few times, I believe, on our Daily Dose of Awesome calls. Yes, I love those calls. They get me started on the right track in the morning when I host them, too. So definitely check that out. Uh, go over to our SoundCloud. Go to uh, it's uh, just search on SoundCloud and Elite Marketing Pro, and you'll find it. Uh, lots of really, really good information in our daily dose of awesome calls. And um, yeah, so finally, again, just want to give you a shout out for being one of our heavy hitters Thank here you. at Elite Marketing Pro. Uh, congratulations to you and and Andrew, who uh, I don't know where he is currently, but um, <laughs> he might be uh, might be traveling. But definitely wanted to uh, also give the tip the hat to uh, to Andrew as well. You guys are one of our uh, you know, one of our power, we, we have some really cool power couples in the industry, and you guys are certainly in that league of, of power couple. You guys have a really cool mojo going on, so. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, he does definitely a ton behind the scenes, so I our business wouldn't be where it is without him. Awesome, well, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Really appreciate it. You're welcome, take care, guys. <laughs>